Hey kids, welcome to the updated 2024 Create Task Walkthrough, Part 2. In the first video, we talked about the changes to the Create Task in 2024, and we discussed how to submit the required materials to your digital portfolio. In this video, we're going to discuss the four questions you're going to answer during exam day. Let's quickly review part one. The multiple choice exam is 70% of your grade. The other 30%, well, that is the create task. Notice it has two parts. The first part is row one and two from the rubric. They cover the key requirements you need to submit to your digital portfolio before the exam. What are these requirements? First, you need a one minute video of your app running. Do not show code, show an input and an output. Next, you need to submit a PDF of your code. This code must include a list. The code also needs to include a function with a parameter and that function needs to go through the above list. Also within that function, you need an if else statement. Finally, you had to submit four code segments to your digital portfolio. The first is the list being created. The second is the list being used or processed. The third is a function with the above core requirements. And fourth, where in your program is that function being called? Big note here, none of these code requirements can have any comments at all. This is really important. If AP flags comments on your PPR, you will not be able to do the written response the day of the exam which with the PPR accounts for five of the six points on the create task. All of that makes up rows one and two of the rubric. That finally brings us to the last four rows of the rubric. This is the new written response that is on the day of the exam. This video is going to explore those four questions and hopefully help you get a six on the create task. I do want to give a little warning or disclaimer. As of the recording of this video, we do not have a full list of potential questions. We know the domains they're going to ask for and the scoring criteria from the rubric, but we only have one or two sample questions from each domain. Any video you watch, including mine, is just guessing at what you will see on exam day. We will not know for sure until they release all the exam questions this summer. Take whatever you hear with a good scoop of skepticism. Well, were any of us getting the details we have? I'm using the rubric part one. This mainly covered the video and core requirements. On the second page, you will see a written response, which deals with that video you submitted to your digital portfolio. Part two of the rubric. This is going to cover rows four, five, and six. We have the student handouts. And of course, the exam description. Probably the most valuable resource is on AP's website. Students only, not teachers, have access to a set of videos from AP covering several potential questions. That's what we're going to review here today. I highly encourage everyone watching this video to go to their My AP Classroom website and watch for firsthand knowledge. Finally, I compiled all this into a handy little spreadsheet. I'd recommend taking a look at it. It's linked down in the description. Let us start with the bottom of page one of the rubric. That is row number three program design, function, and purpose. This deals with the app you submitted to your digital portfolio. The scoring criteria wants you to be able to identify an expected user of the program and describe one way the program's design meets the needs of the identified user. AP released the following question. Identify an expected user of your program. Describe one way your program's design meets the needs of this user. Turn a point for this row. AP is expecting you to address two topics. 
first, what the actual problem your app is solving, and secondly, specifically, who would that be? Be precise. Do not be general, and again, do not describe what your app does. The fluffier the answer, the better, but be realistic. The next row, number four, can be found on part two of the rubric. This one focuses on algorithmic design. The rubric asks you to identify the number of times the body of the error of statement will execute and to describe a condition or error that would cause an infinite loop. If no such condition or error exists, explain how the loop could be modified to cause an infinite loop. AP released the following question. Consider the first iterative statement included in the procedural section of your personalized project reference. Identify the number of times the body of your iterative statement will execute. Describe a condition or error that would cause your iterative statement to not terminate and cause an infinite loop. If no such function or error exists, explain how the loop could be modified to cause an infinite loop. This is referencing your for loop in your function. An infinite loop repeats forever, causing the program to get stuck and potentially become unresponsive. It's like a treadmill that keeps running without ever reaching an endpoint, leading to the program being trapped in an internal cycle. To earn a point for this row, AP is expecting you to address two topics. The answer needs to reference the PPR you submitted. First, you need to describe a change you would make to your function that would cause an infinite loop. And second, why did that change cause an infinite loop? The key to this question is understanding what an infinite loop is and how to cause it in your program. Row number five deals with errors in testing. The scoring criteria asks you to describe a change to the procedure that will result in a runtime error and explain why the changes will result in a runtime error. Let's look at a question released by AP. Consider a procedure included in part one of your procedural section of your personalized project reference. Describe a change to your procedure that will result in a runtime error. Explain why this change will result in that runtime error. Take note, the scoring criteria says runtime error. Do not confuse this with a compiler error. This deals with your list and function. Runtime errors occur during program execution due to unexpected conditions while compile errors occur during compiling due to syntax or reference issues within the code. Let's look at an example of this in code. First, we have a runtime error. See how the code runs, then it finds the error? A compiler or syntax error won't even run. Usually we get a warning about these before we even run the program. To earn a point for this row, Again, AP is expecting you to address two topics. First is how many times the loop from your function in your PPR will go through the list. Describe how you know it will go through that many times. Don't just say a number, five. Second, you will need to describe a way a runtime error would occur in your function. Remember what a runtime error is. This needs to apply specifically to your code. Key to the question is knowing the difference between a runtime and compiler error. Compilers don't let your program run. Runtime happens while the code is executing. Finally, we move on to our last row, row number six, and this deals with data and procedural abstraction. The scoring criteria wants you to explain in detailed steps an algorithm that uses is equal to count a number of elements in the list that are equal to a certain value. A potential question released by AP is, suppose you are provided with a procedure called is equal with two parameters, value one, value two. The procedure returns true if the two parameters, value one and value two are equal in value and returns false otherwise. Using the list you identified in the list section of your personalized project reference, explain in detailed steps an algorithm that uses is equal to count the number of times a certain value appears in your list. Your explanation must be detailed enough for someone else to write the program code. Is equal, 
for the purposes of this video and the create task, we're going to treat it as the equal equal. You probably use a conditional in your code greater than greater than or equal to less than is equal is just another type of conditional. Let's look at a hypothetical algorithm to better understand it. First, let's look at the function name. See, it takes a parameter. This is something we're going to compare to. Inside that function, we want to return a count. We have to create a variable to hold it first. Now we're going to look through a list. This is iteration. We want to compare if what is in the list is equal to what is being passed along above. That is what the is equal is doing. If we match, that's awesome. We're going to increment our variable up. Finally, don't forget to return a count. That is it. This is code we've used numerous times throughout this class. Don't overthink it, kids. To earn a point for this row, AP is asking you to describe in detail how to write an is equal algorithm. This algorithm needs to reference the list you submitted in your PPR. Your algorithm needs to compare your list against a hypothetical parameter. Your algorithm needs to count how many times this happens and finally return that number. At the core, this question is asking how many times does something happen in your code and return that number. Key to this question is applying the algorithm we just discussed to your code. Don't overthink this question. And that's it. Congratulations, kids. I know that's a lot of information. Best way to be successful, keep your app simple. Well, that's the name of the game with the create task. Remember what the rubric is asking you to explain. Answer just that. A quick little review. Written response one, this question is asking you to identify a specific user of your app and describe one way the program design meets their specific needs. Do not describe what the program does. Written response 2A, this question is asking you to determine the number of times the body of your iterative statement will execute, and you must also identify a condition that could stop the termination of your iterative statement resulting in an infinite loop. Written response to B, this question is asking you to describe a way to cause a runtime error in your code. If you can't cause one, you need to modify your code to create one. Remember, runtime errors occur during program execution due to unexpected conditions. Compiler errors occur during the compiling phase due to syntax or reference issues in the code. Finally, written response 2C, this question is asking for a step-by-step -step explanation of an algorithm, specifically detailing how to traverse through your specific list, compare each element with a target value using the is equal procedure, and increment a count variable for each occurrence of the target value. Well, this explanation should be thorough enough that someone else could understand it enough to write the code based on your instructions. This includes describing initializing of variables, the iterative process, the use of the is equal procedure, the counting mechanism, and returning a count. And that is the last four rows of the rubric. Remember, keep it simple, learn your function inside and out, and I know all of you are going to get a six. As always, if you have any questions, let me know otherwise. I'll see you in the next video. See you later, kids. Bye. Bye.